I get so many questions about teaching English online that I had to add an extra video this week to my schedule because so many people want me to do an update about what it's been like teaching English online for the last few months. A few months ago, I finished my Teaching English as a Foreign Language certificate. Um, it was fully done online and if you want to know more about the experience of that, um, I'll link the video up here somewhere and you can check that out. But once I was done, I went sort of to look at the different places that I could teach English online and there were a few different options and initially I applied for a couple and decided to go with only one of them and cancelled my interview with the other. So the platform I ended up going with is called Preply. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I call it. So it was a little bit of a pain to get approved to teach on here, but I'm really glad that I stuck it out and that this is the platform that I went with. I'll show you a little bit of a walkthrough in a minute, but essentially I really like it, um, mainly because they prepare all the lessons for you. So I don't have to spend a lot of time preparing materials and worrying about what I'm going to do before each lesson. There is so much material available that you can utilise and go through with your students and honestly it's just been a complete lifesaver. So whilst they do take quite a high commission, I'm okay with it because they do a lot of the prep work for me. In terms of the ease of finding students, this is a question that I get asked all the time in my DMs on Instagram and Honestly, within 48 hours of my profile going live on this website, I had to turn my profile off and have it be invisible to new students because I got so many bookings in that I knew I could no longer fit in any new bookings. I'm not sure whether that was a fluke, but there just seems to be so much demand for English. and. I do think part of it was because I wrote my profile in Polish, so I was trying to, I guess, target the Polish students and whilst that sort of goes against the grain of what you get taught in the TEFL qualification where you aren't meant to use the native language of the student at all, I knew that a lot of people, especially as adults, would quite like to have someone that they can explain things to in Polish. So I do think it helps if you sort of write a profile in your native language, if you have one, because it could help you sort of access that little bit of the market that may not be available to you if you only speak English. I do try to mostly speak English to my students. It's only if there's something really complex that they want to try to explain or if they're really, really not getting something um, that I'm trying to explain in English. So it's very much a last resort but it does give them that peace of mind that they are communicating with me if they need to. In terms of the types of students I teach, it's very varied. So I do have both young children and adults. So with the children, it's more obviously like um, stories and really simple things, depending on their level. They have a whole kids section, which gives you loads of different topics to talk about. And with the adults, it depends on their level. So we have lessons which are like just speaking practice where it gives you topics to talk about. It gives you some questions where you start with that question and then hopefully you just build on it with the fluency. So you just chat. You might start with, you know, tell me a little bit about your family. Um, that's like the simplest one I can think of. But then you start talking about it and get into a conversation. And then you have just the proper structured lessons where you do have like fill in the blanks and listening and grammar and everything else. In terms of earnings, so on the platform that I use, you set your own rate. So essentially I started off with a lower rate of $13 per hour and then moved up to $15 per hour for a few of my students and then I turned off the profile. My aim is to increase this further once I have reviews. So I basically read in a lot of places that you should start off with a smaller amount um, just to get the experience and the reviews and then move your way up the price range. Now, the one disadvantage of the platform that I use, like I said, is the commission. So each first lesson with every new student, they take 100% commission. 
So you don't get paid at all for that first hour with every student. And then the commission works on, I guess, a sliding scale basis. So you start off pretty high, um, I think it's like 33%, and then you move down. Uh, I'm on 25% at the moment, I believe. 25? I think it's 25. Um, so basically the more lessons you do with them, the less commission they start to take. It's partly another reason why I wanted to start teaching now when I don't really need the extra income as such because then by the time I actually move to Poland and want to do this more as my, I guess, main income for a while, I'll be having lower commissions and therefore earning more. So I currently have eight students um, that have prepaid for packages with me. The majority of them do like the weekly recurring lessons. So I have set times every week where I meet with that set student. So that works really well because it helps me plan ahead a little bit more. Um, and then certain students that sort of do ad hoc lessons um, still on a weekly basis most of the time, but they, I guess, want more flexibility where well, they'll book like a week ahead in terms of when they will be free to do a lesson. For my calendar, I set my availability. So you have your general availability where you say, I genuine, generally want to teach between 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday or something. You, you just set your working hours, if you will. But then you can also amend it. Um, so for example, if you normally work between six and nine on a Monday, but on a particular Monday, you've got a hairdresser appointment or something. Um, well, not likely in the pandemic, but you know what I mean. Then you can just go in and block out your time for that specific week so that no one can book a lesson. You can also actually sync it with your Google Calendar. So if anyone puts a meeting in your Google Calendar, it will come up on your Preply Calendar so that students can't actually book in in those times as well. I didn't really have to do anything to get the students. Um, they have a pretty good search engine and the students come to you. Like I said, I had to turn my profile off because there were so many people interested. I do think there's a huge demand of people wanting English tutoring and it's been completely worth it for me. So far, I've made about 300 pounds in the two months that I've been teaching, but January's been a bit slower than December. I think a few people are still sort of catching up after Christmas and being quite busy, so we're not having as many lessons, but it's still sort of prodding along. I've got um, two regular lessons on a Sunday, uh, one regular on a Tuesday, and then two other regulars that move lessons around. It's pretty decent, um, I do enjoy it. Some lessons more than others. I don't really enjoy teaching like the grammar concepts and stuff, but I absolutely love just the talking lessons where we just do sort of speak and practice. And I am very clear with my students at the beginning, it's in my profile that I don't really tutor for like English exams and grammar and stuff. Like I can tell you if something's grammatically correct and the basic concepts, but mostly it's for like teaching practice um, talking practice, sorry. And most of my students um, are really happy with that because a lot of times in school, they are taught a lot of grammar and they know the grammar rules inside out, but they don't get to practice talking to someone casually. So a lot of people literally just want to chat. So this is what the platform looks like. When you go into each student, you've got your own space with them. And then you've got this course here, which shows you stuff they're interested in. You've got these things, which are conversation starters. And I have just realized that my platform's in Polish, but it's because I signed up from Poland. Um, these are like lesson topics. So you can see here, you've got like kids English, business English, speaking practice and all of that. Uh, and then at the bottom here, you've got general English um, as well. So when you go into one of these, you've got all of these topics that tell you what you can talk about. And if you go into them, um, you basically get materials and questions so you can see um, you kind of click in here and then you start the live lesson and if I show you sort of what the kind of lesson structure looks like if we go into one of these levels here there you go um, you've got all these lessons and you click into the topic you want to do you go into lesson materials and then you can see here all the sections of the lesson um, and just to show you what it looks like, um, you can see here, for example, for countable and uncountable nouns, you've got like tutor notes for each page, 
um, and then the material that you cover with your student. So in the top right corner is where they would normally be on the video. So that's where you would see them and they would see you. And on the right hand side where I've blocked it out, it's our messages between us as well. This is just what your lesson plan looks like. It just shows you all your students and how many hours they've prepaid for with you and the rates that they are paying. And finally, just to show you the calendar. So this is what it looks like. Um, I'm just showing you like a later date in February because um, otherwise it's got all my personal appointments in there. Um, but all these white spaces are when I'm available for lessons. The grayed out are ones when I'm not. Um, and then you can see here it shows like the recurring lessons um, and then the ones that are just booked in as a one-off. So that's it for this video guys. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have any other questions about teaching English, um, just drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.